Draft. America's favorite brand for dishes presents Joyce Jordan, M.D. When a woman buys a hat, she's undecided. Well, I don't know. It's a nice hat, but it doesn't do anything for me. When a woman buys a man a tie, she's hesitant. All these patterns are pretty, but could I see that one on the third shelf? But when a woman buys a dishwashing brand, she knows what she wants. I'd like a package of Dreft. Yes, she buys with confidence when she buys Dreft. And did you know that Dreft, already the favorite of housewives everywhere, is now better than ever? Improved still more? Well, believe it or not, it is. Why, you'll love the new Dreft. It does dishes faster, easier, better than any soap you've ever used. And ounce for ounce in the hardest water, this new Dreft makes more suds than any other product known. Yep, when it comes to suds, Dreft beats them all. And beats all soaps in getting dishes clean. Dreft never leaves any dulling soap film. It actually washes dishes so clean they shine even without wiping. That's right, no wiping. And no scouring greasy pans either. Dreft gets rid of grease so completely, you won't even notice it in the dishwater. This new Dreft has a new mildness, too. It's really a pleasure to use, really kind to hands. Improved Dreft is also delightfully sneeze-free. And, good news for the penny bank, every package lasts longer. I know I'm getting the best when I buy Dreft. Why don't you try it, too? The new Improved Dreft. If you like easy dishwashing, you'll love the new Dreft. Jordan, M.D. I woke early on the morning of the day set for Antonia's examination. I phoned the clerk's apartment as soon as I was out of bed. Bob must have been standing right beside the phone. His voice came to me over the wire so quickly that it almost startled me. Hello, this is Bob Clark speaking. Oh, this is Dr. Jordan. How's your wife feeling today? Oh, she's fine. She's packing an overnight bag. If you listen carefully, you'll hear her singing. Well, that's very encouraging. She's not apprehensive? No, not a bit. Well, I've arranged for a room for your wife. It's on the seventh floor. I always send my patients to the seventh floor. Seven's a lucky number. Well, it has been for me and my patients so far. You'll have lunch with your wife, an early lunch, Mr. Clark. I'll take her upstairs to the examination room about two. Oh, thanks a lot, Dr. Jordan. Andy sends you her love. Well, give her mine. I will. See you soon, Dr. Jordan. Bye. Goodbye. I hung up the receiver. I finished dressing slowly. I spent the morning making calls on patients. And around 12 o'clock, I dropped in at Hotchkiss Memorial. I was an hour early for my appointment with Dr. Gaylord, the man who had taken care of Antonia just after her accident. So, on impulse, I went up to the seventh floor and knocked on the door of the room which had been assigned to Antonia and Dressa Clark. Come in. I just wanted to see if you're comfortable, Mrs. Clark. Of course I am. My husband is sitting beside me, his arms around me. How could I be anything else but comfortable? <laughs> Well, you're in fine spirits, I'm glad. Mr. Clark, the nurse will come in about 12.30 and shoo you away. I'd like your wife to be perfectly quiet for a while before I take her upstairs. May I wait in the reception room on this floor until you bring her down? Oh, of course. And there'll be no reason for you to worry. We're not operating yet a while, you know. We're only examining her. You say we. You and who is Dr. Jordan? Oh, uh, Dr. Gaylord's going to be with me while I do the exploration. I'd hope to have Dr. Tracy. She's chief of staff here at the hospital, but she's been called out of town on a consultation. <laughs> Dr. Gaylord will find me very much changed, Dr. Jordan. You mean... I was a blonde when he saw me last. Now I am a brunette. <laughs> that is what I mean. What else could I mean? Thank you. 
As I went out of the room, Andy was reaching for Bob's hand. I closed the door softly behind me and returned to the ground floor of the hospital to Dr. Tracy's office, where I was to meet Dr. Gaylord. I was vaguely uneasy. Antonia had been too gay, too light-hearted, too nonchalant. But I'd been aware of the shadow on her face. I glanced at my watch. Dr. Gaylord was due. And I was glad when I heard a knock on the door. Come in. Hello, Dr. Jordan. Hello, Dr. Gaylord. Come on in and shut the door. Long time since we've seen each other, Dr. Jordan. Yes, it certainly is. So nice of you to come. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Will uh, Dr. Tracy join us presently? No, I'm sorry. She's been called out of town on a consultation. Well, I... I guess we can swing the examination between us. It won't be too difficult. <laughs> I hope not. I have a precedent to go on. You mean the case of Dawson Blakely? That's right. Of course, there are always medical miracles. That's how we doctors manage to build up our failing morale, isn't it? Uh-huh. Next case may always be the miracle case. To my mind, Dawson Blakely's case comes under that heading. Miracles are recurrent, Dr. Gaylord. We have proof of that whenever springtime comes around. That's a very poetic interpretation, but... Uh, You're not so hopeful about Mrs. Clark. I'm neither hopeful about her nor interested in her. You must dislike Antonia intensely. I've had every reason to dislike her, Dr. Jordan. She never said a pleasant word to me from the time she was carried into the hospital on a stretcher to the time when she was carried out in her husband's arms. Now, now, weren't you interested in her case at first? In her case, yes. But from the moment she regained consciousness and opened her mouth, she ceased to interest me as a person. Nurses hated her. The interns hated her. And when the people from the circus came to pay her bills, I gathered from certain things they said that they hated her, too. Bob Clark never hated her. Bob Clark is one of the most remarkable young men I've ever met. Antonia Clark is one of the most disagreeable young women I've ever met. Did you ever see her act in the circus? No. Well, I did. She was wonderful. I brought the notes that I took on her case, Dr. Jordan. Would you care to go over them? Oh, yes, I would, very much. I brought her x-rays, too. They're in this envelope. Mm -hmm. Now, this is her left leg, Dr. Jordan. I see. And this is her right leg. And side views. Frontal views. Dreadful. This is her collarbone. Her left shoulder was badly involved, too. Mm. So I see. To make a long story short, she was in a frightful condition. This is the upper part of her spine, Dr. Jordan. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not too bad. Bad enough. This is the base of her spine. I can't tell very much from the x-ray. Neither could I, but when I examined her in the operating room, I came to a definite conclusion. Uh, you made certain tests after the bones were set? Well, I scarcely had to. Hmm? The paralysis was a preconceived diagnosis, then? Almost. Well, I'm not questioning your opinion, Dr. Gaylord. You'll realize that. Of course I do. It's only that... Well, I know it sounds silly, but... Antonia's changed so materially in every other way that there may also be a change in the spinal setup. She herself said you'd find her very changed, Doctor. She said that you'd known her as a blonde. She's a brunette now. Her hair is utterly unimportant to me. It's what goes on under the hair that matters. Some very nice things go on in that brain of hers, Dr. Gaylord. Come, come, Dr. Jordan. The day she announced that she was going to marry Bob Clark, she actually sneered at me. She said she'd rather marry a man she didn't love. She'd rather saddle an innocent chap with a hopeless cripple for life than have a lack of security. Her face was so ugly. And... Nowadays, her face is so bright that it's almost luminous. She fairly radiates happiness. Why, when her hand reaches out to touch Bob's, it... well, her very gesture is beautiful. When he enters the room and she smiles... What you're saying is very hard for me to believe, Dr. Jordan. Antonia told me that it wasn't possible to be... Angry or vicious or sarcastic or even impatient in the presence of Bob's goodness and kindness and God-given tenderness. She said that his love had washed her soul whiter than snow. 
When Bob slipped the wedding ring on her finger, he worked his own special miracle. Antonia Andressa is the happiest woman I know, Dr. Gilroy. Happy? Yes. And Bob Clark is the happiest husband I know. The most contented and satisfied husband. Even though his wife is a cripple? Even though his wife is a cripple. If that's so... I guess I better put these x-rays back in their envelopes. X-rays have a way of getting mislaid if you don't keep them where they belong. I'd like to borrow the x-rays for the next week or so, if I may. You were about to say something and then changed your mind, Dr. Gaylord? It's best not to talk out of turn. No, go ahead. Well, Dr. Jordan, you never saw Antonia Andressa when she was at her worst. Well, that's true. But I've had very graphic descriptions of her worst, Dr. Gaylord. It was a pretty bad worst, believe me. I've never seen Antonio at her best. No, no, you haven't. But you've given me an extremely graphic description of her best. And it's a very good best. Oh, believe me, Dr. Gaylord, it is. Then... You've asked me to come here, Dr. Jordan, on a consultation. You've also asked for my professional opinion regarding Antonia Andressa Clark. I have. I've given you my opinion, medically speaking. Now I should like to make a suggestion. Go ahead. I'm going to suggest that you don't. That I don't what, Dr. Gillard? Don't go ahead. Since Antonia's been a cripple, she's been good. That's right. Perhaps, Dr. Jordan, if you give this woman the use of her legs, if you free her from a wheelchair, the wicked Antonio will come back again. Oh, no. There's an old saying that when the devil is sick, the devil a saint will be. It's quite possible. In fact, it's highly probable that this will be true of Antonia Andressa, and it will be the ruination of Bob Clark. No, no. You say no, but are you sure? I say that it remains to be seen. Personally, Dr. Jordan, I think a broken body is preferable to a diseased soul. From Whittier, California, here's another... I have to let her from Mrs. H.A. Newhart, who says... Whenever I ask my husband to help with the dishes, he says, I have to uh, go lock the basement windows. <laughs> well, of course, you couldn't pry them open with a crowbar, but Al hates to do dishes, and so do I. Well, if that sounds like your husband, you'll love that new drift, because it does dishes far faster, far easier, far better than the very best soap. You've never seen such suds. Why this new draft makes more suds than any other product known. Yep, ounce for ounce and in the hardest water. They're hard working, says the wash dishes cleaner than soap. They shine even without wiping. And those new draft suds cut grease on pots and pans without hard scouring. This new draft's much milder, too. The mildest draft ever. And oh, so easy on your hands. It's wonderfully sneeze-free, too, this new draft. And every package washes one quarter more dishes. Don't miss it. If you like speedy dishwashing, you'll love that new draft. Now, this is Ron Rawson inviting you to listen again to Joyce Jordan, M.D., brought to you by Procter & Gamble, makers of Drift, America's favorite brand for dishes. It's new, it's improved, it's better than ever. Drift. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.